history records that two centuries ago on the eve of your independence and during my nation's revolutionary war, more than 500 of your ancestors came from Haiti to my country and died in the fight to bring the United States to life. Merci, Haiti. Here you have one of the greatest feats in human history, the, the Haitian Revolution, which um, not only defeated three powerful military armies, but it also eradicated slavery. The American Revolution did not do that. The French Revolution did not do that. It remained for the Haitians and the Haitian Revolution uh, to do this and to vow that slavery would never return. This is why when Napoleon attempted to reestablish slavery, he was soundly uh, defeated. And there was tremendous apprehension on the part of the United States and Britain and Spain because now in the middle of all of these slave colonies, mm -hmm. there breathed free this powerful black nation that liberated the other side of the island in terms of the Dominican Republic and then aided uh, Simon Bolivar and, and, and others. Really nice. When we pay gratitude to Haiti for what it did for all black people and, and indeed for all oppressed humanity, mm -hmm. for all humanity, because the idea of a victory over slavery is a victory for every human being, no matter whether you're Chinese or Polish or whatever, this is an important victory. And it also inspired men like Simone Bolivar. For this liberated Haiti, this new republic, this first free republic in the Western Hemisphere gave arms, gave soldiers, gave printing presses, gave munitions to those in South America who were trying to win their independence from Spain. That is why there is a, present, uh, a bust of the Haitian President Petion sitting beside Simon Bolivar in the legislature in Caracas, Venezuela. Because the South Americans know that the Haitian people paid in blood for their freedom too. And when they won their revolution, they said to the whole world that to any fleeing enslaved person anywhere, there's a home for you in Haiti. One has to wonder at all about what happened you said in Haiti. That, just right, you said that. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, who readily accepted violence as the price of freedom in France, was not so relaxed about the blacks revolutionary in Saint-Domingue as Haiti was called until its formal independence in 1804. Yes, no, for, for American leaders, particularly those from the South like Jefferson, the specter of a slave revolt a successful slave revolt, mm -hmm. uh, frightened them to death. They were afraid anyway. They, they knew that this was, uh, Je as Jefferson said at one point, if there's a God in heaven and he believes in justice, we know which side he will take when it comes. Mm -hmm. He knew that. I mean, he was not oblivious. He didn't think that slavery was okay. He mm -hmm. knew it was not. And he, he felt very much that the example of Haiti would stimulate uh, a revolution he knew was going to come in the U.S. at some point, the African-American slaves would be free. And he thought this would advance it. He did not, as a result, he wanted no contact with Haiti. He wanted to close the ports of mm -hmm. the United States mm -hmm. to any Haitian vessels. Uh, and uh, it was a matter of great fear. What he uh, suspected, and which was true, was that one of the things the Haitian Revolution did is it sort of unified a kind of African diaspora in the New World. And American uh, slaves were not unaware. The word got around, ships traveled, news traveled, and they were aware of this in some of the slave revolts, the famous ones, Denmark, Vesey, uh, uh, in particular, was knew a great deal about the Haitian Revolution. Stand up for your right.